What has COVID taught us? That's a really interesting question. What have we learned from COVID? That's a good question. Sorry, I need a moment for that. Oh, that, that's an excellent question. That's a very good question. Oh, that's a great question. We can't let down our guard. And I think COVID has taught us that. And it's taught us what we need to do to be prepared when such a pandemic happens. The science community, which is for me the inspiring part, is completely global. The virus has had no borders. What we've learned is science has no borders. And I think that each of the interconnected nature of our economies and our, the research development working on the big global problems, climate change is a global problem. Um, managing our ocean resources is a global problem has all been brought into stark relief as we have been restricted in our movements. But I have never felt more uh, comfortable that all the science institutions and medical institutions in the world are actually looking at this now and working together. Pretty much everything that we have learned up until now is shown to be truth, and that is we need to have preventive measures in place. We need to have educational campaigns that work. We need to have trusted committed relationships between scientists and politicians to have effective policies and directives that will get the, the population to agree and work together. And, and you need to have a strong healthcare system that can deal with the aftermath of whatever happens. So these are the things that we normally learn when you're getting trained in epidemiology. Everything needs to come together, needs to work well. And I mean, Australia has been incredibly effective in doing that. But what do you think COVID's taught us about the public's understanding of, of epidemiology? Well, at least they know what it is now, which is exciting. Because <laughs> before that, whenever I told people I was an epidemiologist, uh, most of the, the answers I would get is whether I was a skin doctor. What I loved, and I loved particularly about being in South Australia, was to see policy and the science move together really, really quickly. It's been phenomenal to watch how respectfully both the scientists and the policymakers, particularly in this jurisdiction, have worked to kind of go, we know what needs to be done. We trust the evidence that we're being provided, but we also have the social and economic and all the, the health considerations. And with the social and the science coming together, you also saw prevention in action. It was phenomenal to see prevention work so well when you get your, your COVID deniers or whatever. It means your prevention has worked really well because we're not, it's not out rampant in the community. <laughs> We've actually done a really good job in prevention and that's where our heart is. We've taken this approach where we trust our top health officials. And so we should, because we shouldn't be appointing them those to business decisions if we don't trust them. Where we trust our scientists, where we say, actually, we're in a situation where everything is so unknown, we need to take every bit of data we can, make sure that that data is good and use it to drive decision making. Because we've only got certain predictive power in this data, but you know, people are seeing it, they're seeing the change. And I think what's probably most important about it is that we're we're saying this is why we're doing this and then it's showing the outcome of it. So we're connecting that full scientific process rather than just saying, trust us, we're a scientist and we know what we're doing. And so all of a sudden it becomes, oh, I have to do that for a reason, not just because the government tells me to, which actually says that we've got an educated and smart population that if you explain why we do something, can work with it. I think as scientists, we have to learn to be better communicators to the general public. In times like COVID, it's the scientists that the governments of the world should be turning to, to listen to. And over and over again, when a scientist says cases are rising, we should be in lockdown and that doesn't happen, we see the results of that. Your immune system plays a role every day. It's not something that we generally think about unless we're sick. And so, you know, having an understanding of how the immune system works in relation to COVID, I think is really important. Science is fundamentally important to solve major issues for humanity uh, and in health in this case. For science though, it's important that the, the science that is taken out into the community is at a level that they can understand. And in some ways it's just overwhelming. And it's the responsibility of the scientists and also the, the chief medical officers to get the message out there. In a period where we've had the development of fake news and maybe more recently opinions about who's won elections and all that sort of thing. I think COVID is a kind of a reminder that, that the natural world diseases don't care what our opinions are, that things can come along and completely overturn the way that we think we should live. I think we've learned that we as the human species are 
part of an ecosystem. And we know that when we interfere with nature, nature will throw us an issue that we have to deal with. Nature doesn't need humans, but we do need nature. So many people who've been involved in lockdown have been going stir crazy or had depression from not being able to get out. And those few times when they have been able to get out and go for walks in nature, when they've seen a lot of the wildlife return to the towns and the cities, it's a really positive inspiration. We need to do this more often. We need to slow down our lives, get out there in our environment, enjoy it and take care of it. I mean, I think COVID-19 has taught us that we need to be agile and adapt and innovate to deal with a threat like that. They did an incredible job locally in, in developing a, a test rapidly at SA Pathology that could then be deployed to contact trace. And the scientists there who developed that test really, uh, I think, saved many lives by, by getting it out so quickly and shutting the virus down so quickly. The biggest impact, I think, we had from COVID is that we had three teams that had qualified for the World Championships over in the US. And then within a few weeks, COVID hit, the reality was that this was probably not gonna go ahead. I think for the kids, it kind of had that real world connection from the robotics competition, having to be canceled from COVID. This wasn't just a matter of missing the World Championships. This was something on a global scale that was impacting everyone. For them, it was like, wow, you know, this is it's the real deal. COVID has probably taught us a, a couple of things. And the first is how vulnerable modern technological society is to, to disruptions that, you know, seem rather minor initially. And there are lots of those. Accurate timing and navigation, the power stays on, and the refrigeration works. And very small disruptions like that could put us all back in, in caves again. So, you know, as a society, we really got to think uh, ab about what these vulnerabilities are and have some sort of mitigation strategy in place. I think COVID's taught us that some of what was considered impossible is actually possible. So, you know, in the space of four weeks, we went from seeing patients in a clinic to seeing them virtually. And everyone had thought that wasn't possible. It's taught us that some simple measures can really save lives. I mean, a lot of people thought that hand washing was quite simple, but it's surprising how many people didn't hand wash. People worn masks. People have stayed home when they're sick, whereas previously they would have come into the workplace or gone into the supermarkets, whereas now their thought process has changed and they know that it's more important to stay home. It's pretty amazing seeing a food packaging manufacturer here within 14 weeks producing approved surgical masks. And that was about taking a risk on an opportunity, knowing that the world's changing, so why not change with it? So we've set up a face mask testing facility here, um, which has enabled us to do testing for manufacturers and even something that looks as simple as a face mask actually has a huge amount of development and testing and you know standards that it has to meet in compliance. Without pure research, no medical breakthrough will ever happen. I'll give you a very simple example. So the reason we were able to test for coronavirus so quickly is because of the test is based on PCR. Polymerase chain reaction is based on the structure of DNA. DNA structure was discovered in 1953. In 1983, you know, the PCR was used to amplify bits of DNA. So the test PCR is based on you know, 30 years of knowledge, which came from fundamental research. So you, you cannot just find a virus and develop a vaccine. There is enormous amount of knowledge which actually fills that gap from actually isolating a virus and developing a vaccine. COVID has changed the relationship of the public with science. For most people in a very positive way, I think they can see the power of the scientific process when you accelerate it to this level and can go from an unknown virus to a defined virus to a vaccine over a period of within about a year. Most people are blown away by the capacity of the science, but there are a small number who go the other way and believe that science created this problem and let's stay away from science and let's stay away from vaccines. So we're never gonna uh, persuade that five or 10%, I don't think. I was actually in South Africa doing field work just as the COVID situation started to get much worse. And then I, 
I scurried home with a few days before they shut the border and we actually really loved having that chance in the late pregnancy to spend a lot of time together and by the time Wilfred came along there was nothing in the house that wasn't painted or fixed or bought or ready to go which certainly wouldn't have been the case otherwise. So during COVID we didn't get any work and any income for about three months and part of me loved that because I had a break but also I realised how grateful I am for this opportunity to come in and meet people and one of the best things of my job, and after 15 years I may have got a bit complacent with, was that people really appreciate it. You know, it's not too many jobs where you go to work and everybody tells you all day how valued what you do is. At the start of the COVID pandemic, we actually saw a surge in our sales. People really started to see the benefit of a small, lightweight, portable x-ray system, easy to deploy, particularly in a field hospital, easy to keep clean. So that was quite a positive. Within our team, I actually think it's helped bond us together a little bit more and there's definitely been a, uh, an increased sense of camaraderie. Yeah, I'd like to think that if suddenly science is at the forefront of people's lives and the decisions they're making and they're reading evidence-based studies in terms of changing their behaviour, then perhaps we can spread that out to you know other parts of science, whether it's how people interact with the environment or how people interact with others, then that would be really cool. I think it brought out the best in the scientific community and the community generally, actually. There was a real willingness to change behaviours and act on scientific advice. Uh, with pandemic, we are never out of the woods. We are never out of the woods until we are fully vaccinated. But I was very thankful in many ways and, and also very proud of our health system. It stood up to a great challenge in our lifetimes also very proud of many of my colleagues who really, really worked very hard and acted really professionally to develop these things. But I think uh, it's, it's fantastic to have a public health system which actually looks after people, everyone. We've demonstrated that we care about each other more than we care about just looking after our own self-interest. That's a really positive sign for society because if you can get to a point where you say this is actually about the greater good, that's fabulous.